How do? Welcome back. Well, do you remember about a month ago we had a look at the at the Brasola I made, and uh, it was a bit of a fail because it was still raw inside. The outside was nicely dry, but the inside was still moist and raw. And I decided to cut it in half. And one side I cut it into steaks and I, I put them on a barbecue, and it was it was beautiful. <coughs> Sorry, it was beautiful. Let me tell you. Uh, the other half. I put into a vacuum bag and I sealed it up and I've left it in the fridge for another month and this is what we get. Look at that. Brissola. It's nicely dried all the way through. Don't worry about the white powder. That's, uh, that's normal. You see that if you're going to delis and they've got big hanging hams and, and salamis, they'll, they'll have this white powder on. It actually gives it a nice tangy sort of flavour. But yeah, it's it's finished. So I think the only problem I had last time was uh, I didn't give it long enough to dry out. I gave it one month. It should have perhaps been two months or, well, it's taken another month just for half. It, it probably could have been three months uh, to get to this stage, but you live and learn, don't you? <laughs> so I'm just I'm just eating a few slices that I cut off for a little lunchtime snack. Beautiful. <laughs> Whoever first put together juniper and beef was a genius. That is beautiful. Mm. Oh. Mm. Tough. I can't, I don't have a meat slicer, so I can't really get those nice, really wafer thin, paper thin slices. But that is incredible. I don't think I'll make it again though, just because of the time element. I will stick with my uh, salamis and saucissons because they only take a month. Uh, but that is a really, really nice piece of dried beef. And as I say, that uh, the brisola, uh, sorry, the, the juniper, just incredible. Right, this, this is the wild yeast ale that I'm making, an experimental ale. And this is actually the day after my last video when I brewed it. I forgot to take them indoors yesterday. And when I woke up this morning about seven o'clock, I remembered and I thought, oh, right, I'll have to bring them in uh, during the day. So I came downstairs and I came into the garage and sure enough, because it was about eight or 10 degrees last night, the, uh, the raw saison was just flat, no activity at all. So I moved that indoors. Uh, that was this morning, about half seven, eight o'clock. And now it's starting to ferment. You get a nice krausen forming on the, on the surface. So the, the warmth of being indoors is sort of motivating the yeast to, to begin fermentation. So that's great. This, even, don't forget, it was eight or 10 degrees last night. This was like this. <laughs> this morning when I walked in at eight o'clock, it was not like this. In fact, I had to clean the airlock because some had come up into the airlock and I don't know if you can see, but it's it needs another clean. So some of this, and is getting pushed up into the airlock. Not much, but just a little bit. And over time, every few hours, you see it building up in the airlock. I think I overpitched, basically. Uh, I maybe could have used about half or a quarter of that starter. <laughs> I think that probably been enough for a full 20 litre batch. But you live and learn, don't you? Uh, but I'm really interested in this now, and not just taste-wise, 
but the fact that it started fermenting when it was only 10 degrees. I thought this would be like an ale yeast uh, and you would expect it to be room temperature, 18 degrees, 20 degrees before fermentation kicked in like with the saison. I thought this was going to be flat, <laughs> but it wasn't. It's really enjoying itself. So I'm thinking I'm going to keep this in here. If it's happier, uh, temperature now, it's, it's just after half past one. And the temperature now in here is about 16 degrees. So it's, if it's happy between 10 and 16 degrees, then why, why move it? Also, I'm thinking if I was to move it indoors and this yeast was to get even more active, I could be in with a real mess on my hands. So I'm thinking I'm going to leave it here until at least about Friday. So that's in another four days time. And then once it's calmed down, once the Krausen's dropped and things are starting to just become a bit more relaxed inside the fermenter, I may then take it inside and then give it a week or 10 days, just uh, like as a diacetol rest. That's my thoughts. I don't know what you think. Leave a comment because I don't know, uh, it's the first time I've done this, an experimental brew. But that's my logic, is that if it's happy here, leave it here for, well, until, until the weekend. And then for the last week, take it in inside and, and just raise the temperature like you would do with a lager for that last week of fermentation, just to give it a diacetol rest. And let's see if that the yeast, if it has produced any diacetol, it will just it will just motivate the yeast to clean up all the all the uh, the weird flavors and the diacetols, all the byproducts you don't want in the beer. So that's my thought. That's my strategy. Let me know in the comments if uh, you think it's right or not, <laughs> because I'm making this up on the spot, <laughs> literally. Right, I'm going to get back to this Brissola um, and then just enjoy the rest of the afternoon. I hope you have a great time. Uh, you've had a great weekend. And uh, as always, I'll see you again in the next video when I'm going to be making sauerkraut and I'm going to show you how I make sauerkraut. So that's coming up on Thursday. So thanks for watching. It's been a pleasure and I'll see you again later.